Here in this video we will take a deeper look into the predator aliens. We will focus on their origins, biology, life cycle and how they became the deadly interplanetary hunters. So let's get to it. Origins The Yaoja are a sentient humanoid alien race that breathe an atmosphere similar to that of Earth's but possess an extreme level of technological advancement. There are two origin stories for this alien monster. The first one tells us that it is a highly advanced species that originated in the planet called Yaoja Prime. Their primitive ancestors were called the Hish and they were enslaved by an insectoid alien species called the Amengi, which they later revolted against and secured their freedom. Another origin story was told in the comics Predator Homeworld where it was theorized that they evolved from ancient earth animals called the Therapsids, which had both mammalian and reptilian characteristics. They were then later experimented on by aliens that took them off world, most probably the engineers or they evolved on earth millions of years ago and for some unknown reasons they migrated from earth to Yaoja Prime. So take your pick which origin story is the better one. Let's look at their morphology. So these predators are bipedal humanoids that are physically different from humans in that they are taller, ranging from 7 to 8 feet in the common subspecies and up to 11 feet as in the case of the genetically enhanced ultimate version. They have long hair-like appendages on their heads, known as dreadlocks, and they lack a nose. Their skulls are bulbous and seem to look like an oval-shaped fruit with borders having a hot osteodome like outgrowth just before the dreadlocks grow out of it. Their eyes are situated on the front within a very hollow eye socket and there are multiple rows of hair like quills that grow on their face, chest, shoulders, upper arms, maybe even their backs and their feet. But the most distinguishable feature of theirs are the four mandibles that are present on either side of their mouths, which are lined by long sharp teeth which they can use to eat or defend themselves or even fight with. Okay, next their inner biology. So anyway, let's take a look what is inside of these jolly reggae killers. The skull of these predators house a brain which is way larger than that of any human, thus giving them a higher intelligence. But also their enlarged frontal lobes mean one thing. They are a species with predatorial senses honed to the optimal level, and thus explaining their aggressiveness and their killer instincts. Their eyes are different to humans in a way that they can see in a higher wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum. In short, they have thermal and infrared vision. They have a similar digestive system, surprisingly, to earthly carnivores, which is inferred through the scene of one of them being able to consume animal meat on earth, as seen in the city hunter eating meat from the slaughterhouse. These predators are cold-blooded and hence their affinity towards hot and humid climates. Their blood is bioluminescent and shines in a phosphor green color and has the capacity to partially neutralize the acidity of the xenomorph blood. Well, partially at least. It also has been known to be capable of extending a human lifespan well beyond that would be normally possible if infused into the body of a person. They are highly resilient to physical damage. Uh, they are capable of recovering from multiple gunshot wounds and with minimal or even no medical attention, meaning that they have a very high regeneration factor. They are also resilient to radioactivity and are immune to most viruses and microbes. In short, their genetic material far surpasses that of earthly creatures and humans. So next, let's look at their life cycle. Well, it's quite a common life cycle, a simple one. The Yaoja are similar to earth animals in that they exist in two pairs, uh, two sexes, the male and the female. Although most specimens that have been encountered are males, there are a few individuals that are females, most importantly the matriarch which a uh, female achieves when she is blooded. They do not lay eggs but give birth to life young, which are called sucklings. These sucklings are raised in a village raising kind of situation, with no parenthood, which shows that their lifestyle is devoid of intimate parents. The young ones only grow to become adults when they are around 50 to 60 years, equivalent to a person of 18 to 19 years of age because they age slower than humans. Their lifespan seems to stretch out for thousands of years, one of the longest living species in their universe, only surpassed by the xenomorph queens for instance. Then there is the predalien life cycle, which although isn't really a predator, can be counted as one of their hybrids since their highly effective DNA 
gave the Predalien a more predator look than a Xenomorph. Okay, let's talk a little bit on this, then their genetic enhancements on themselves and then get to their growth stages. The Predalien life cycle starts with a Xenomorph egg, also called an Ovomorph, which houses a creepy looking spidery creature called a Face Hugger. This Face Hugger then implants the Xeno embryo into a predator by latching onto its neck with its long tail and with a long mouth to mouth alien French kiss. It inserts the embryo right into its throat then going down to its uh, digestive system and there it grows. And after some time a young chestburster alien will pop out and grow into a 3 meter tall or a 10 feet tall predalien which is one of the most powerful versions of a predator aside from the ultimate one. Next these predators are also known to be highly advanced in genetic engineering and also to modify their own genomes in order to adapt and evolve without the need to undergo through natural selection, let's say. Instances where this is seen is in the movie The Predator, where the two Yaojas or predators seen on Earth weren't anything like the normal hunter variants. The first one, the fugitive, might look like a hunter variant but had human DNA which gave him rudimentary understanding of human culture and language, and even humor. Uh, the next one, which is the big ultimate predator, had many genetic enhancements are giving it unusual abilities making him 11 feet tall with bulletproof skin, bionic cybernetic enhancements and digital great legs. And that's about it. So that's the unique variations of their life cycles otherwise it's life young and they grow into adults. Okay lastly let's look at their growth stages. So yeah as we've said before these sucklings or young yaoja grow in a village raising kind of parenthood which takes around 50 years or more. And over that long period of time, they are trained in many forms of hunting and warfare techniques. These young predators cannot go out on hunts on their own until they go through a specific hunting ritual called blooding. And until then, they are under adult supervision. Though not required, when they are blooded, the newly blooded predators typically form prestigious bloodlines and can undergo further training by retired predators. A blooded Yaoja will occasionally serve as adjutants for a hunting party next to a leader acting as a secondary overseer. And after that, they go solo. And that's about it. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this video about the origins, biology and life cycle of the predators. So do hit that like button for support and subscribe. But most of all, smash that bell icon for regular updates on new videos right here on this channel. Till the next one, take care fam.